That's St Paul's <laughs> Cathedral, where um, you've got a, a clan of people claiming to occupy the land. Uh, somebody came in and they were screaming at the protesters, uh, calling them all a uh, bunch of obscenities and the rest of it. Uh, so that was a waste of time. The usual stuff that you'd hear on a protest site about um, from people wearing suits, uh, upper class, uh, just screaming at people, calling them crusties, all the kinds of names. So everybody's uh, gathered round him. Uh, I've, I've, the only thing I've said to this guy was, yeah, God loves you, and he carried on walking and screaming at other people. And then this, this other bloke's got up, he's walked through the camp, and uh, he's quite a bit of a big lump, and he's socked the bloke up the side of the head, and started throwing him about like a rag doll. So I've gone running in to split them up, and I've said, what do you think you're doing? Uh, and he said, uh, um, the guy that was screaming the obscenities assaulted some woman. And I didn't want to argue with him about that, so I just told him that you're not going to sort violence out with violence. And at that point, he grabbed hold of my cane and threw it in the road where he got run over by a bus. <laughs> then like, he's run round, well, walked round, sorry, tried to knock this guy's phone out of his hand. And um, I've gone over and split it up again. He said, what do you think you're doing? You're just going to make these pro protesters look like a bunch of wrong ones. what's your motive? At that point he grabbed me around the scarf, twisted his fist into the front front there and the sides tightened up and at that point I'm choking and my arms have gone up in the air and that's the only time that my arm was raised and he said I hit him with the cane. Now if I hit him with the cane after he's been run over it's got a big cut out of it and if I hit him with that it would have lacerated his face all up. So um, whilst I'm choking and not being able to talk he's going he's hitting me, he's hitting me, he's hitting me and then he's just dropped me, I'm shaking at that point and blacking out, and as I'm shaking my head is like cracked off the pavement opened up my eye just there um, and then the police said afterwards, do you want to make a report and I said, well, how long do I have to decide about this, and he said, right now I said, well, to be honest, mate, all I want to do is go and sort my eye out and decide what to do after that and he said, well, you have to make a decision now and I said, well, why is that, he said, well, you might be making a report against you and I said, okay, am I being detained now and he said, well, stay where you are, and I said, well, am I being entertained right now. He said, well, we need you to stay there. I said, one more time, am I being entertained? He said, not right now. I said, thank you very much. I went and walked and sat down in the middle of the church steps. When I sat there for a few minutes, the police had come up with this other guy and basically said, do you want to make up with him, shake his hand and uh, forget all about it? And I was like, yeah, all right, not a problem. So I shook him by the hand, I said, congratulations, you're the second bloke to ever knock me out of my life. Um, I think you've got anger issues, I don't mind being the one to talk to you about them. And we shook hands, he walked off, I walked off. Somebody told me that my hat was under their tarp around their tent area. So I went to pick that up, and as I went through the other side, he was the other side saying, um, you're a sellout. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're a effing sellout. And I was like... You've got issues, bruv. I just turned and walked away. At that point, he's screaming at me, swinging his arms. Police have got involved again. I've walked up to the welfare area, which have set up around St Paul's, um, got my eyes sorted out. And at that point, he's made an allegation that I've assaulted him, so I've got arrested. They've gone through my pockets, found a bit of cannabis in there. They've asked me what the St John's Walk tincture is, and it says St John's Walk tincture on it. And they've sent that off for Class A analysis. Failed to do a drugs test because I declined their offer, and uh, they failed me on a Class A. So it's gone through the police station uh, that whole night and day for the interview, <laughs> then the City of London courts. Then they didn't have couldn't tie me to the name, so they sent me off to Wandsworth Prison. Uh, so I don't know what's happened to innocent until proven guilty. It's more like the other way around, guilty until proven innocent. They sent me off to Wandsworth, um, played all the games like to the letter in there. They were asking the date of birth. Um, I'm telling them, uh, well, if you want me to be honest, I can tell you what the date of birth is because I was only little and I wasn't counting at the time. And then he said, so what does it say on your, date, on your birth certificate? I said, well, funny enough, it says on the birth certificate, Crown copyright. So anything that Crown claimed to own can't have anything to do with me. So he said, what, what did your mother tell you? And I said, well, anything my mother told me is only hearsay and not admissible as evidence. All the inmates at this point are pissing themselves off and cracking up because we're all waiting to go to court. Um, at that point, he said, right, get his clothes off, take him into that room, sort him out, and then take him back to the wing. And I was like, OK, this is going to go what off. Uh, they took me off to a little room, <laughs> told me to take my clothes off and get changed into the prison gear. Uh, they said, you're going to get an ID and all the rest of it. Gave me actual verbal threats. Uh, 
I had to talk my way out of it when I just said I'm doing this from the heart. We're being enslaved by a monetary system, statutory instrument, a body of rules and written words. This is like enslaved by a piece of paper. We don't care about that, we don't want to hear about that. And I said, well, you should do. This is your family's future. I tried to touch their hearts and then I ended up saying to them, I'll tell you what the alleged date of birth is under duress because I've just been threatened and I don't actually know what the date of birth is. And then I said that to the, uh, the screw and he basically put me on the bus. I went to court, done what I do in court and have released the name until the 6th of January but changed it to City of Westminster Court. That's about the short A lot of people are very confused because they're starting to wonder why it is controlled from people that don't actually stay on the camp. That loads of people make decisions and vote rules and then clear off site. Who are these people? Why are they making rules? Where's the donation money going? Why is the community kitchen closed at midnight? Is this just a media showcase? Are they trying to enforce a new monetary system by having these meetings with power elites, banking systems? They're not going to actually get any... Um, truthful, factual, like honest resolution from talking from banking elites who want to offer a new monetary system with more equity. All that is is going to be another crown controlled monetary system with another set of rules behind it. Everything else that's gone on, more statutes and acts are going to be behind that. The Robin Hood tax that they want to enforce, it's all just for your own enslavement. And people think they're doing a good thing and voting this stuff in because they're doing it from the heart, they don't actually see how deep this deception is, so they're letting the people that are organising it, making the rules, and then there's a load of people voting it in, and they don't know what is about to come with this new monetary system that the banking elites want to offer them. It's crazy, but it's so obvious to see. My life is a carnival. I've got a front row seat to this cosmic change that is going on right now. I've, I've been blessed to be sitting there in the front row watching all this turbulence go on in front of us. And sometimes it is turbulent and some of us are going to have to take that on the chin and deal with it as it comes. This is part of the life experience of how to deal with stuff as we are evolving. Yeah, if we operate from the heart and factually, there's not a lot they can do. They can't beat you down with that. As much as I try, I'm still uh, the happy being I am.